Hello fellow translators. Now I've done one of these videos before but it's been a number of years since I did it and I know that pros.com has made a bunch of changes since then and since they have a brand new website and things work differently I thought it was time to update a video on how to sign up for pros. So that's what we'll cover in this video how to sign up for pros. So let's get right into it. First of all, you register. Now the registration can be for free and as you can see they have uh, a couple packages you can choose from. Let's scroll down here. And um, I generally recommend paying for it. I'm going to go through the free re registration here to show you how it is, but I generally recommend always uh, to pay for it. If you're going to pay for anything when setting up uh, your career as a translator, Pros.com is one of the few things I recommend actually paying for because I think it's worth it. But we'll get into why exactly that's the case. For now, let's just sign up for free. And as you can see, there's a discount here. Instead of 120, it's 110. In my experience, you still get that discount later on, so you don't need to worry about it too much. So let's click on, are you a freelancer? And it brings me right here to the same page again. Okay, that isn't formatted very well. Let's just click on register now. So here this is a great option. You can register with Google, you can register with LinkedIn, and this means it connects directly to your accounts there, and so you don't have to fill out a bunch of in the, the information here. I'm gonna fill out the information anyway since I'm doing this as an example, but uh, just keep this in mind, this will make it that much shorter. Of course, then it will be linked into Google or LinkedIn. Uh, I actually recommend doing that and, and linking your pros.com account to LinkedIn because clients will like it better if they can see both your accounts and uh, automatically they will be linked and you'll likely have similar or the same information. Regardless, right now we're going to fill this out. Account type, freelance translator. We fill out an email address. And you pick a username that hasn't been used yet. Then you fill out the rest of the information here. TM Town, I would ignore it for now. Don't worry too much about it. And you can explore it later on in your own time. You should agree to the terms. And here you can sign up for any newsletters or anything else you want to sign up for. I'm not gonna sign up for anything uh, for now. And uh, once again, you can decide later if you want to sign up for any of these. And then I get this page that says a special one-time offer. And uh, once again, the one-time offer is $110 a year. As I mentioned, in my experience, later on, you still get that $110 offer. So I wouldn't worry about it too much right now. But since I'm going uh, for the free version right now, since I want to show it to you, I will forego this one-time offer. So now you get this page, and it's quite interesting because it gives you some, uh, well, it gives you some recommendations for things to do first. First of all, use your real name, and then have a user picture of yourself. And I definitely recommend this, and I talk about this more uh, in other places, but uh, I definitely recommend having a photo here. And then a tagline. Now for your tagline here, there are just a couple things that I would recommend. It's a bit annoying that it opens up a whole new page. Now the main thing in your tagline is that you want to be searchable. And so one thing I recommend, because I see a lot of translators make this mistake, is not to put something like this, but rather you want to spell out your languages. This makes you searchable, whether it's via pros.com or online or anything. And remember that a lot of end clients, because pros.com is accessed not only by agencies, but by end clients, they might not even know what the abbreviations are for certain languages and stuff like that. So make it very clear. And uh, so write what type of translator you are. And you can add something if you want, as long as it fits. It has a maximum of 40 things. So you can add uh, MBA or... 20 years, nope, that doesn't fit. So yeah, you can add something very short if you want. Otherwise, for now, just keep it at Italian to English Translate or whatever your language combination is. And over time, you can kind of experiment with different things. Another thing that I've seen people do more recently is use emojis. Uh, so basically an Italian flag or here a British and UK flag, something like that, um, since it helps to stand out. So now the freelancer 
profile completion guide, you see a lot of things are missing. There's actually only one thing that I'm going to uh, deal with right now because it's the most important one, that's languages. And so let's change the languages. I think we can do it directly from here, language pairs. So this page has everything to do with languages. Here you can add a language, so I will add Italian. Proficiency level, I will say mastery. You'll notice they don't have native for this because they only let you choose one native tongue. So English is my native tongue, and I put mastery here, which seems to be the highest level for Italian, and I save. So now we have the language pairs. I'll choose Italian to English. Services I perform, I perform translations. Save. Now let me add one more, and I'm just doing this because later I want to show you something with the job search, and it helps if I have more jobs to search from. And uh, so I'm going to add French here. I'll say advanced, save. Now I'll add a language pair. French to English. Once again, I perform translations. Save language pair. Save and update profile. And at this point, we're done. I mean, we're absolutely not done because there are a lot of things we still need to uh, fill out. But um, this is enough information to be able to start our job search. So let's do that right away. And I want to show you how it works when you have a free account and you're searching for jobs. So it's very simple, you go under jobs and directories, click on browse jobs. Now you'll notice that these jobs are Farsi to German translator needed, uh, English to Dutch, these are a bunch of languages that have nothing to do with my language pairs. And uh, that's because I haven't specified it here. So I'll just click on my language pairs. So this will show both Italian to English and French to English. And I won't specify any field of expertise or location at this point. So here we have a translation of a book um, uh, about lean and just in time. Uh, so it's about it'll be about entrepreneurship and stuff like that. And just a couple things I want to point out. You see this 4.8 here and six entries. That's in the blue board. And ideally, you want a company that has as high as possible. Five is the highest. Of course, this is only one entry, and this is six entries. Here we have 36 entries, but it's 4.3, so it's getting on the lower side. And, um, and always keep track of this. 3.9 is already too low for me, quite frankly. Anything below 4, I don't want to work with because uh, it seems like they, they might have problems. But um, this is the blue board, and I talk about this more in detail in other places, so I won't do that now. But suffice it to say that anytime you work with a company, you should always check their blue board score. Now, I'm not going to click on this job, and the reason is it says here, this is for pros.com members. This is for paying members for two more hours. And uh, so it won't let me apply to this job. And if I do click on it, I'll get a message like this that says the information of declaring your profile does not match the necessary criteria because it's restricted to pros.com paying members. As I mentioned before, I recommend paying, but let's look for another job at this point. This job over here, open quoting, is open for one more day. 105, this is the number of people who've applied. So here we, we might want to be a bit careful because there'll be a lot of competition. However, when you hover over it, you can see that this is in many different languages. Now, even though this job is for captioning and so it's for subtitling, I'm gonna click on it anyway because I want to uh, go through how to apply for a job with you guys. So let's pretend that I do subtitling too, that I do captioning. And uh, as you can see here, the quotes received are 105 for all these language combinations. And here there's no Italian to English, so French to English is my language combination. Seven other people have already applied. That's my competition. Of course, if I have Arabic to English, Portuguese to English, or just English, I would have a lot more competition. This is just something to keep in mind when you're applying to these jobs that you do have competition. Um, and as you can see for the blue board, they have a good rating. It's five, but it's only one entry in the past five years. So take it with a grain of salt. But so far, so good. Everything looks decent. Let's submit a quote. Of course, you should read through the job description ahead of time 
to make sure that uh, the job is good for you and that you're good for the job. Now, on this page, what you do is you select your language combination, then it'll ask for a rate. I'll just say nine cents per word, US dollars. You can add other things here. You don't have to under price notes, deadline, completion date notes, but you should add a title. So under title, we'll put French to English translator. And under message, it gets quite interesting. So if you have a set cover letter or something like that, feel free to copy and paste it here and then you can tweak it for the specific job. Now let's say for this job it says, submit quote, over 6,000 hours of English caption needed. Say, I'd be happy to assist you with your captioning uh, job. Captioning is not really my specialty, so I, I'm, maybe there's another way to word it. But uh, I just wanted to give you this example because what you can do then is save it as a template. So say captioning French to English, saving it as a template. And that means in the future, if you have another similar job like this, you can just click on this and this will pop up. And then obviously you can tweak it each time as needed but at least you don't have to retype it every single time. And I find this very convenient. You can have as many templates as you want here and uh, it makes it very easy to apply for jobs in the future. Here you can upload your CV, attach a file. You can decide to leave your email address or not. Either way, when they reply, they can get back in touch with you. But here's the issue. When you quote for the job, you still have to pay money and uh, you need to pay $1. And to do that, you need to add money to your wallet. So let's do that. Deposit the funds in your wallet. And here you see you have to deposit $20. And uh, so you're going to pay $20 and it'll cost you $1 for each uh, job you apply for. So $20, you can apply for 20 jobs. And this is why I think it's just worth it to pay the $110 and be able to apply to any job you want. So what if you decide at this point that that's what you want to do? Well, then go back. Actually, probably at any point in time, you can just click on upgrade and it'll let you do that. So, uh, you know, they make it very easy for you to uh, upgrade to their membership. However, here, let's just click on professional membership. Click on buy now. And as you can see, it says 120 per year. Uh, the plus, I would not bother with the plus right now. If you decide in the future you want to use that, that's fine. But the standard uh, will serve all your needs. I will click on purchase now. Right, and as you can see, the discount is still there. And uh, so you can still get it for 110 US dollars. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, this is a recurring payment. This didn't used to be the case, but in essence, this means that every year they renew it until you cancel. You might want to keep this in mind, enter it into your calendar date, to see if a year from now you've been using it at all, if it's worth it. Otherwise, you should cancel it before it renews. Uh, but uh, yeah, just something to keep in mind. Otherwise, you fill out the information and then you're a member and you can apply to any job. One other thing I'd like to mention, because I was very quick here and I just specify my language pairs, but you should also specify uh, your fields and your specialties. Because a lot of jobs, in fact, probably most jobs at this point, uh, want people who specialize in a certain industry or something along those lines. So as you can see, when I clicked on that job, I cannot apply for it yet. Why not? Because I need to have expertise in whatever they're looking for, which is medical. And I and I didn't specify that, and quite frankly, I don't have that. Um, our native speakers of the target language, I reported that I am, so there I'm fine. Report experience with at least one of the following software tools, Trados, Studio, oh, so just that one, and I have not specified that yet. So the more you fill out your profile, the more jobs you'll be able to apply for because a lot of people specify certain uh, details and specifications that they require from the translators. And of course, to edit your profile, you always can just hover over your name, go down here, and click on Edit Profile. 
Now that's pretty much it. That's enough to get you started on pros.com and enough for you to apply for jobs and, uh, and handle all that stuff and pretty much do whatever you want to do. I would take the time to go through your profile and uh, make sure it looks good, make sure it looks professional. This will be your online business card, your online website for a lot of prospective clients. And so it's important that it looks professional and it looks good. Once again, I definitely recommend having a user picture and pros.com allows you to have a user video as well. And I recommend doing something like that because it gives uh, the prospective clients ease of mind if they can see the person behind the name. And it's good in terms of transparency. Otherwise, that's it. Now you're signed up for pros.com, which is pretty much the best website out there for freelance translation. Although the website very often is not intuitive at all. And uh, so hopefully this walkthrough helped. And that's all for now. Otherwise, I'll talk to you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye. Sabidum.